this is a movie about people. Right. These people happen to be Black Panthers. Um, Bobby Seale happened to be the man who started the Black Panther Party with Huey Newton. Um, Kathleen happened to be the highest ranking woman. When you sit back and watch it, uh, and you see the story of a person, Jamal Joseph, you know, before you see that film, you never heard of Jamal. I mean, you may have, but other people haven't. And you see this man introduce himself. And when those kids started cheering and clapping after he kicks that poem, and I go, damn, you know, they're into the people. They're into the story of these people. And I think that that's why the movie works for people, that it is the story of four people who were in the Black Panthers and what happened to them. Something that people don't know about the Black Panther Party is that every person who was in the party, rank and file people, uh, all were given the opportunity to, uh, to be in a leadership role. We used to have an assignment called Officer of the Day, and that gave uh, a rank and file member the ability to run the Black Panther Party office, uh, which meant that the officers, because you know it was, a, it was a military design type of organization, so the officers were all subordinate to the Officer of the Day. The person who was the Officer of the Day basically was running the business. I came here because <laughs> Somebody told me that I was on the cover of In Touch News, this uh, current issue. It's Black History Month in America. And I said, oh, check this out. So I got to come to Bridgeport to get the black news. Obviously, we don't have this in Westport. Nile Rogers is an accomplished musician, songwriter, guitarist for high, such, for high profile talent such as Diana Ross, Madonna, David Bowie, Paul Abdul, Jimmy Vaughn, Al Jarreau, and so on, so on, so on. It says that I am now a Westport resident and a legend in my own right. Some of you may remember me from the group Chic, that uh, had big hits like Dance, 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 Yowza, 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 La Freak, and Good Times. I also wrote and produced for Sister Sledge and did We Are Family and He's the Greatest Dancer and all sorts of stuff like that. But then it goes on to say, um, <laughs> did I mention he is also a former Black Panther Party member? We had an outreach program and we brought in about a thousand high school students. And I was amazed at how, uh, how poignant, how, um, uh, how direct, um, I mean, just the, the insights that these kids had. And check this out, Adam. The, the thing that I thought was really strong was they all wanted to know what they could do. Which, which really blew me away. They all wanted to know, like, okay, now nah, we've seen this movie, so-and-so, yeah, we were feeling it, now what do we do to, to develop programs to make our lives better, to change the quality of life? Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was incredible, man. I was like going, damn. You know, now I think youth gets a bad rap. Everybody talks about just being in it for self, right. but these kids wanted to know what they could do for other people. In the 60s and the 70s, we had focus because we had a thread that tied us all together, man. Just, I mean, people were afraid of going to Vietnam. Some people just didn't want to die or get shot at or shoot other people, and they just didn't want to go for that reason. The anti-war movement tied us all together, and that's why we were so powerful. That's why we were able to affect change. And some people believe that that's why the super hedonistic 70s followed, because we felt like we had gotten something done. So we could all just sit back and chill and go, <laughs> bring on the blow, bring on the girls, and turn up the bass, you know? When we first started Chic, when hip hop first uh, started to, to develop, and, and they started making records, right? And, and uh, you know, and, and Rapper's Delight came on the scene and they were like, you know, stealing our strings and shit. I, I had a problem with it and then I realized, you know, somebody sat me down and they educated me and they said, you know, no, when you went to school, everybody was taught music and art as part of the normal curriculum. But, you know, now they've cut back on the programs. The government has cut back and now kids are using the best tools that they have available to create their own art form. And I started to back off and say, oh, no kidding. And I started to develop another sense of appreciation for what people do with music. The first gig I did at the Apollo was with Aretha Franklin. And I was nervous, right? Because I, I mean, I was, imagine this, I'm like the skinniest brother. I'm skinnier than that dude now, I'm, you know, 47. But then I was skinnier than that dude in the Black Crows, right? So I'm this skinny dude, big green afro, right? I'm like, yeah, because I was a hippie. You know, big green afro, tight pants, you know, with your bulges sticking out and stuff, you know? And I walk up on stage, and I'm not looking like any of the other brothers in this, in this outfit. And Aretha, you know, she was a little bit feeling nice that night. And um, 
And they, they were just, you know, like, this is how you got your training back in the day. You would go up on stage with the old school guys and they put the young bloods through the test. Right. And I get up there and I'm a good music reader, right? So I get get up on the stage, they look at, look at the charts and it's like some great song by Aretha, I think it was Oh Me Oh My. And it was like, okay, guitar solo. I'm like, what are you talking about guitar solo? I got the record, there ain't no guitar solo. But um, we just had to hit it and, and you put on a show and it was different all the time and it was, the whole interplay between uh, the people in the audience and and they took me through the ropes and they and that's the way they used to teach you you know put you on the spot of course I was nervous they knew I was nervous so it was what we used to call the show and prove for them you know you talk all that mess now go up there and show us and prove to us what you can do good times. Right.